thanks, John. To things perhaps a little less upbeat, Prince Charles has described the horror faced by Syrian refugees as he visited a camp on the Jordanian border. He said many of the children he met there today had been traumatised by their experiences and called it heartbreaking. The charity Save the Children says the situation is no better, possibly worse, for what it says are two million children still inside Syria who are being dragged into the conflict, recruited as fighters or even human shields. A warning, there are some distressing images from the very start of Porrick O'Brien's report. A parent's main job, keep your kids safe. In Syria, that's hard to do. We think this little girl was lucky. Thousands like her aren't. A report out today asks a question. What's happening behind the eyes of a child watching their world fall apart? Over half the refugees are children in Syria itself. We've estimated in this new report that two million children need urgent humanitarian aid. And yes, children are cold and they're hungry, but what really hits you when you meet the children are the terrible stories they tell. This child is too young to tell his story. He's a little older than the conflict itself. He can't comprehend the enormity of his bombed house. But his cup is on the ground. It's broken. He gets that. Children in activist videos like this one is itself a sort of exploitation. Take this one, the launch of the Free Syrian Army's Children's Battalion. The boy in the corner has showed up on his bike. The guns are fake. The ones that drive people out of their homes are real. One estimate puts the number of child refugees at 500,000. Three in every four of them has experienced the death of a loved one. Today, Prince Charles and a tearful Duchess of Cornwall visited a refugee camp in Jordan. Well, I just, I found it just a very humbling experience. I, you know, seeing all those children, and some of them without parents, who've lost their parents, who've obviously been adopted by others. Um, I found it quite heartbreaking. Like the children in the activist video, they've left their toys behind too. They have pen and paper though. Today's report features pictures by refugee children. And like boys everywhere, they draw tanks. Unlike boys everywhere, they also draw what tanks do. Porrick O'Brien there. Well, I've been down to Westminster to speak to both the Russian and British foreign secretaries. That's after David Cameron hinted that Britain could bypass the European embargo and send arms to the Syrian rebels. The international law does not allow, does not permit supplies of arms to non-governmental actors. And in our point of view, it is a violation of the international law. We should have a broader picture of the situation. Yes, Syria is indeed a tragedy and there is a humanitarian crisis. But we should not just stick to the only decision of arming the opposition. We should think about what is going to happen next and try to have a broader understanding. Foreign Secretary, question for you. Just to pick up one point you made today, you were quite specific that barring no change in the situation, Britain would, as you put it, increase support to the Syrian rebels. I'd just like to spell out precisely for people what Britain means by increasing um, support. The support we give is exactly what I've announced in, in Parliament, and that is our position. Again, as the Defence Secretary has said, we've never ruled out anything in the future. We don't know how grave this situation will become. It is already a situation of extreme humanitarian need. There is a possibility that it will get even worse, if we can imagine something even worse than millions of people on the move, tens of thousands uh, losing their lives. Uh, you can hear from everything we have said today the emphasis on a political settlement and a political process. And the UK and Russia both have an important role to play in that, and that is why we've spent a lot of time on it.